Hi everyone and welcome back to my KOS tutorial series. Today we're going to look at control structures, or flow control as it's otherwise known within scripts. And this is via use of if statements along with for, until and from loops. So if statements essentially let you make decisions in your code. So if a particular condition is true you execute one block of statements, if it's false you execute another block. You can see an example on the screen right now where I simply set the value of a variable and then check the value of that same variable. It's a very simple example but it demonstrates what the if is about. You'll notice that there's a second part to the statement, the else, and that's what provides the sort of alternative block of code for if the condition is false. Now the if is fairly simple so I'm not going to dwell too long on it. Hopefully you get the idea behind it. You may also remember from my previous video on scope that each of these blocks of code for the condition being true and the condition being false, they define scope for a variable. So if you define a local variable within one of those blocks, it, it will only exist within that block. Now the until loop, this basically executes a block of code over and over again until a particular condition becomes true. You can see an example on the screen right now where the code basically just increases the thrust setting for the ship until it reaches a certain value, in this case 1, which is the maximum value you're allowed to set. You may notice there's a wait command at the end of the code within the loop. Now the reason for this is that KOS will execute as much of your code as it can in one tick. That's the name for basically a moment in time in the game. So what happens if we remove the wait is that all this code executes within the same game moment. So you'll see the thrust setting appears to just go straight from 0 up to 1. Minus the speed limit that the game imposes on how quick it's allowed to change. So what the wait does is that basically tells the game, I want to wait for some amount of time. So go back to doing whatever you were doing before and just wake me up again when that amount of time has passed. The little trick we pull in this case particularly, and you'll see quite often in other loops implemented by people, is that we specify a very, very small amount of time. This is less than the amount of time that's between ticks. And this basically ensures that on the next tick, our code is woken up again and continues executing another iteration of the loop. This is usually what you'll want for these loops. Again, the code within the loop defines a local variable scope, so any variables you define within the loop won't exist once you exit from it. An example of where you'd want to use an until loop is if you have some fine-tuned control that you want to use for your ship until it reaches a certain height or a certain speed then you'd set that height or speed as your condition for the loop and you'd have your control within the body of the loop. So next up we have four loops and four loops basically run one iteration of the loop body for each item in a list that you provide. You can see on the screen at the moment is an example that iterates over the engines attached to the ship, prints out their name and counts them, printing out the final count at the end. If you're familiar with other languages such as C and Java, this is a bit different to the for loops that you're used to, and is more like the for each sort of loop that you find in other languages. What you can see is that you provide the name of a variable, and then each time through the loop, that variable is assigned the value of an item from the list. So the first time through it refers to the first item in the list, second time through it refers to the second item, and so on. The variable name you provide doesn't have to be the name of a variable that already exists because the loop will create it for you. And to avoid confusion, generally you'll want to avoid existing variable names. Okay, finally we look at the from loop. This one is a little more complicated than the others, but it's similar to the until loop and we'll get to that in a moment. It's also similar to for loops you'll find in C and Java, they can be rewritten as a from loop pretty easily. So you can see an example of a from loop on the screen right now. It's basically made up of four parts. You have a from followed by a code block, and that contains statements that you want to run before the loop begins. Any variables you create in there will only exist within the loop itself. You then have until and a condition that defines when the loop should stop running. 
This is the opposite of what you'll find in for loops in C and Java, where they define the condition under which the loop should continue running. Then you have step and a code block, and all the statements within that block are executed at the end of each loop iteration. And then do and a code block which executes each time through the loop. You can actually just leave the code blocks after from and step completely empty, and that just means that there'll be no code running before the loop starts and at the end of each iteration. If you do that for both of them, basically you've created an until loop. Now I mentioned that any variables created in the code block after from will only exist within the loop. Now you may notice that this is a little break from what I discussed in the previous scope video, because the way I explained it there would imply that the variables would only exist within that one code block, so they wouldn't actually be available within the loop body. So to possibly make this a bit easier to remember, maybe a little more intuitive, on the screen right now you can see an alternative formulation of a from loop, where the statements have been written out without using the actual from loop syntax. In this form you can see that those variables that you create in that initial code block will exist for the whole loop. For me personally I find this alternate formulation more natural for me to write just because I don't have from loops of this type in other languages I've used before. It is entirely up to what you use, there's no right and wrong way to do this. And some people do find the from loop formulation a bit more intuitive for themselves, because the code that runs before the loop and at the end of each loop iteration, essentially the housekeeping code, is all contained within the loop definition, which keeps it away from the rest of your code that's doing the actual work of the loop. So that's a quick look at flow control in KOS. As always, if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below or on Twitter. Thanks for watching, and keep a lookout for future videos in the series.